Joining us now on the Michigan Megacast is Jamie Wolf, the vice president and treasurer, as well as the co-founder of NBS Animal Rescue, a shared Detroit-supported charity and nonprofit. Thank you for being with us today, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me today, Tyler. We really appreciate it. Yeah, glad to have you with us. Uh, first off, tell us about NBS. How did the organization begin uh, and what services do you provide as, as an animal, animal rescue and shelter? Yeah, so we started in 2011. Uh, I met Rebecca Aikens and Aaron Fortin uh, when we were all volunteering with another animal rescue organization in the area. And um, we became very good friends. We were very like-minded and decided that we wanted to start our own animal rescue organization back then. So we officially opened up our doors in October 2011. We were truly a grassroots um, organization. We started with an absolute shoestring of a budget. We, I think we each brought $300 to the table to start the rescue and build a website. And um, we started building relationships and connections with different area shelters. And um, obviously we already knew a lot of different people in the rescue world to begin with. And uh, we started rescuing dogs. Uh, we, we took our passions and, and turned them into NBS Animal Rescue. And so your primary goal, uh, or one of your, among your primary goals are to rescue and rehabilitate uh, animals that you will find that are that are homeless, that are in need, and then educating the community uh, on, on on that process and the need for adopting uh, p p pets that are going to be in need of homes. So let's start with the uh, finding of the homeless animals and, and the imme immediate treatment. How how often does a shelter, does say a rescue like yours, find mm -hmm. these animals, uh, find these homeless animals, and then what often is the condition that you're finding these homeless animals in, and then needing to care for them? Uh, those are really good questions. So we work primarily, and every single rescue is a little bit different um, here in the state of Michigan, but we operate primarily right in the Metro Detroit area. Um, so we stick to the Tri-County area. Uh, we work with a number of different shelters, um, the Macomb County Shelter. Uh, we work with Oakland County. We work with Detroit Animal Control. Um, and we are generally pulling animals out of shelters. Um, because our rescue specifically, we focus focus on small breed dogs. Uh, so obviously a, a young small breed puppy um, that doesn't have any medical issues is, is very easy for a shelter to adopt out. Um, the animals that we get called in on are generally the older animals, the seniors, or the ones that have a serious medical issue. And um, so we take in a lot of high medical cases, um, dogs that maybe need some kind of extraneous surgery. Um, sometimes it's a severe dental. Sometimes it's a luxating patella, um, which is where the kneecaps pop out of place and it needs to be surgically corrected. Um, sometimes it's eye removals um, because uh, a lot of small breed dogs can, can battle eye issues. And um, so the dogs that we take in generally have high medical needs to begin with. And that's our baseline of where we start uh, with each one of our animals is generally um, getting that baseline done of their medical needs being taken care of first and foremost. So between the shelters and uh, animal rescue such as yours, in the Tri-County area here in Metro De Detroit that, that you uh, mentioned you serve, what typically mm -hmm. is uh, is the way that these homeless shelter, the homeless uh, animals are encountered? Are, are they often stray animals that are injured or are, are they more so animals that are unfortunately for one reason or another abandoned uh, by mm -hmm. their homes? Yeah, so we see a, a, a litany, basically all of the above. Uh, when we're dealing with the shelters, um, the shelters obviously are taking in animals. Sometimes they have animal control officers that are working on the streets, picking up stray animals. Um, they are obviously, first and foremost, trying to find their home. Um, but if no owner comes forward looking for their animal, then the shelter will begin searching for a rescue for that animal. Um, sometimes it is people find themselves in unfortunate situations, like changes and they have to surrender their dog and so they may surrender the dog directly to the shelter um, sometimes we have owners actually reach out directly to us as well as a rescue um, because they know that we are serve small breed dogs specifically and so they'll reach out to us directly um, and sometimes it it, it can be um, a veterinary hospital we have random cases where a veterinary hospital some uh, family can't maybe take care of a dog any longer and the 
the veterinary hospital is helping to facilitate find, finding the animal a new home, and so they'll reach out to us. So there's a number of different ways that animals end up homeless, and um, we work to change that, and we work to fix that for them. We're joined by Jamie Wolf, the vice president, treasurer, and co-founder of NBS Animal Rescue, joining us on the MegaCast. More information about the about the rescue on ShareDetroit.org by going to their Find a Nonprofit link and searching NBS Animal Rescue, or by visiting their their website directly at NBSAR.org. That is NBSAR.org. And so, Jamie, how has the pandemic impacted? Uh, the way that your animal rescue operates, and then the needs of your animal rescue out in the community. Yeah, so the pandemic definitely had a very big effect on us as well. Um, one of the things that we do with all of our adoptions is we do what's called a home visit. And um, the purpose for us in doing the home visit is when some when a family is approved to adopt a dog, we take the dog to the home. If there's other animals in the home, we help facilitate the introduction to the new dog. Um, we talk about the animal and we just spend time with the family really educating them about this particular animal um, because every single animal has its own needs. Um, during the pandemic, we actually stopped doing um, as long of home visits and we actually started using technology like Zoom um, to do the introductory meeting um, to have that with, with our new adopters and make sure that they're still getting the level of education that our previous adopters were on their particular adoptive animal. We also were impacted because veterinary, uh, veterinary costs increase um, as many costs have um, over the past year and a half. Um, some, some veterinary hospitals have had to eliminate or reduce uh, rescue discounts that they often have been able to give in the past. And uh, we saw a lot more lead times with being able to get certain procedures done, uh, which unfortunately caused us to have to delay adoptions until some of these, these basic things were taken care of for the dogs. Um, so it's, it, it definitely has impact us and um, we have we have we have worked our way through it um, you know one step at a time yeah, circumstances change and, and the impact of those circumstances uh, changes the paradigm for, for any organization for mm -hmm. any nonprofit for any charity and, and certainly uh, for animal rescues considering uh, all the things that have gone on during the pandemic and in the early rush to adopt animals and unfortunately mm -hmm. in the, by the middle of the pandemic or just in the past several months uh, a little bit of that rush to then uh, to then bring animals back or abandon animals has also played a factor and when those circumstances change the needs mm -hmm. of these organizations change with those circumstances too so at this time jamie what are some of the greatest needs of your organization that the community may be able to help with yeah, so I mean, our, our biggest needs have actually stayed relatively consistent. Um, foster homes, um, one, foster homes are the lifeline to a rescue such as ours. We do not have a shelter, for example. Right. Um, we are what's called 100% foster home based. We don't have animals in a centralized location. Each one of our animals actually goes into an individual foster home so that they can recover, be assessed um, individually. And and so our foster homes are, are the absolute lifeline to our rescue. Um, so having dedicated foster homes who are willing to take care of these animals um, are, are key to our existence and survival. Um, so that that would be our always our number one need are the dedicated foster homes. And um, our group of foster homes at NBS, I mean, we're, we're a little family in and of ourselves and um, we, we absolutely love our fosters and uh, do everything that we can to support and take care of each one of our foster homes. And um, then obviously donations. Um, we are not uh, state or federally funded in any way, shape or form. Um, all of our donations come from our dedicated volunteers, um, adopters, supporters. And um, so those are those are going to be our two biggest needs. More information on the website nbsar.org. That is nbsar.org. They are also one of 277 charities and nonprofits supported by Share Detroit. More information about all 277 of those organizations, including NBS Animal Rescue at ShareDetroit.org. We're joined by Jamie Wolf, the Vice President, Treasurer, and Co-Founder 
of NBS Animal Rescue with us on the Megacast. And so you mentioned fostering uh, a, a critical role of what your animal rescue is able to provide to our community. If someone is interested or a family is interested in fostering some of these uh, dogs and these puppies that are coming in to NBS, uh, what goes into the process of them becoming a foster and then what is that obligation then from, from there forward once they do become a, a foster uh, foster home for these animals? Yeah, so anybody interested in fostering can can go to our website and our website actually has an entire section dedicated to fostering along with the foster home application. Um, a foster home goes through the same exact application process that one of our adopters do because our, our goal is obviously to make sure that these animals are getting into good safe places and um, fostering is exceptionally rewarding. Um, it can be very difficult, obviously, uh, saying goodbye and letting go of your of your first or second foster, but it gets easier with time when you're able to um, see a dog transform literally in your home and then be adopted out to a new family. Um, many of our adoptive families send pictures and updates consistently, uh, which is really great for a foster home. Um, the commitment really comes down to love and time. Um, NBS strives to take all of the uh, difficult legwork out of, you know, having to gain supplies or having to pay for any kind of uh, vet appointments. NBS handles all that. Uh, we have a in, in Sterling Heights. One of our the one of our co-founders, Aaron Fortin, um, has a business himself, and he has a warehouse that has a, a ton of supplies. And so we will supply a foster home with any physical thing that they would possibly need. Um, we coordinate all of the veterinary care. Um, we can even help facilitate getting an animal to and from vet appointments. Um, we have a, a, a foster and volunteer page uh, where if you're going on vacation, another foster or volunteer can take your dog in for a week or two. Um, so our, our goal is to take care of literally everything that somebody would need to take care of a dog and allow the foster to just love respect and get to know this animal um, so that we can find that animal the best possible home. Well, Jamie, thank you very much for joining us. Before we let you go, anything else that we should know at this time about, about NBS Animal Rescue? Um, no, I just wanted to take the time to thank you. Uh, also thank Share Detroit for allowing us on. We're a grassroots organization. We work off of a shoestring budget that has um, no kind of marketing dollars. So allowing us to be a part of, of a broadcast like this is very important to get the word out about who we are and what we do. So thank you very much to, to both of you and Share Detroit. Appreciate it. Again, you can learn more information about NBS Animal Rescue in a couple of places. ShareDetroit.org by looking uh, them up in, in their search uh, charities and nonprofits section or by going directly to their website at nbsar.org.